Hi, hello. Welcome back to Character Design. Today is the last session of this module. We are going to talk about representation and about diversity. As we have seen, video games are a way of representing reality. We are going to explore the conventions uh, about gender and race representation. We are going to see uh, some examples about the representation and misrepresentation of uh, these different uh, groups. The main goal of this lesson is to be able to make a reflection about what it is representation and misrepresentation of these characters. There is not a good way or a bad way to represent our characters, but sometimes uh, some characters can be interpreted, uh, can be understood as offensive, and we need totally to avoid this kind of reactions. As always, we are going to introduce some terms that can help us to understand better the concept of this lesson and can help you to explore uh, this topic in uh, uh, more depth. Stereotypes are only ideas. Ideas we have about a particular group of people. This group of people can uh, be uh, representing um, similar age, similar genders. We tend to think about all this group of people as having the same features, as being very similar in particular aspects. Stereotypes is a word that is uh, linked to sociology and to psychology and is different to other concepts like archetypes, where we refer to a type, to a group, to a kind of representation that is unseen. This, uh, this is a psychological word and it's related to narrative, for example. Prototypes would be as well another word that is sometimes uh, confused with a stereotype and has nothing to do. Prototype refers to the relationship between the ideal and the real uh, object. Okay? For example, creating a prototype is to create uh, an idea about what it should be uh, a particular project. A very good example of how stereotypes are embedded in our society, Simpsons, as we have commented many times, is a very interesting uh, uh, case for all kinds of uh, studies related to character design because it has uh, so many different characters that uh, it tends uh, sometimes to be a stereotyping uh, society. And it makes fun of these kind of stereotypes. Doesn't mean necessarily the writers of the series share this stereotyped version of the society, but they make some laugh about it. Stereotypes are not essentially good or bad, but they are probably essentially wrong. Sometimes we have uh, stereotypes about uh, some kind of people and these are positive. Like, for example, thinking that everybody that uses glasses should be intelligent. However, most of the time we think of stereotypes as something negative. And this is because nobody wants to be a part of a stereotype. Everybody would like to feel different and everybody would like to be uh, considered as, uh, as we are, as individuals. The thing is we have to be aware that when creating characters, we are communicating with the audience and therefore there could be problems in receiving a particular character because it is received as a message. In the current society, we are dealing with this kind of problems every day. I guess you are aware of all the debates around pop culture and representation, like for example, white bush washing. Like for example, white washing. This is usually uh, the case when we think about movies that uh, are representing characters that could be from other races, but they have been uh, selected or casting as uh, actors uh, from a white Caucasian profile. This is very common, especially in things like uh, comic books or uh, fantasy stories. There are other terms that are also interesting, like for example, pink washing, that refers to the inclusion of characters that are LGBT, 
as a way of gaining the support of these communities. Another common debate these days is uh, this one of cultural appropriation. We are thinking somehow that uh, some particular uh, behaviors or uh, portraits are belonging to a, a ethnic group, a legacy, a tradition. Audiences can be offended when uh, these uh, symbols are used or are translated to a different context. As commented before, we are in the uh, representational space. We have talked about uh, representation versus uh, game in this and other modules. We understand that games are forms of representation the same way that movies or TV or comic books or any other media. When we think about the ways video games can represent reality and real people, we can think of different ways. One of the books I used in this module, uh, edited by Malkovsky and Rasborn, three different areas. The first of all is uh, referring uh, gender, bodies and spaces. And here we can see that obviously representation in video games can be uh, dealing with gender. We can think about uh, female and male roles within game characters. We can think as well about the preferences in play. Uh, what's the difference uh, between uh, female and uh, male players when uh, addressing to video games? Games are also ways of communicating and uh, games are themselves game spaces, like for example when we play online. There are gender cultures and also there are relationships among gender within game spaces. Do we prefer to play with uh, people of our, uh, our um, same gender? Do we prefer to use games as a way of socializing with other kind of uh, people? The cosplay, for example, is an interesting practice, a performance where uh, players can adopt the uh, form, the, the appearance of a famous character. And they can perform, can behave during a specific amount of time, during the visit to a comic convention, during a video they record for the TikTok or anything like that. So cosplays can be an excellent way of seeing how we uh, deal with this representation, how relevant can be in order to construct uh, our uh, body identities, even if it's for a short period of time. Traditionally, criticism on video games have been uh, addressed to uh, aspects such as the misrepresentation of uh, gender in video games. Video games, like other forms of popular culture, participate in what it has been called the male gaze that is constructing character situations, stories that are according to the vision of a particular group of people, male people. We all participate of the male gaze as consumers or as creators. We can talk about misrepresentation or underrepresentation. There are facts about this. There are not enough video games with female avatars, with female characters. That's true. There are not enough females in the industry, although the numbers have been changing, shifting in the last years. Well, what can be a little more tricky is when uh, it is commented that there are different ways of representing gender and video games might not be appealing to the right way of representing gender and gender roles. And these complaints can be also applied to other uh, minorities, like other ethnic groups, or uh, LGBT collectives or wherever. I would say, and in this I'm following um, the text by Isvista, that but the beauty of the video games is that we have some choices. We have more freedom than in other media. Think, for example, in terms of character customization. With the years, uh, video games have evolved to give us the possibility of creating our or, uh, own characters, own avatars, and uh, sometimes that allow us to define, to challenge these uh, different con conventions. 
they are an amazing uh, diversity or at least a potential for diversity within the player uh, control characters or uh, the known uh, uh, player characters. We have the possibility of challenging stereotypes. Traditionally, games such as the role-playing games have been uh, based on the possibility of creating our own stories and an important part of the story, as we have seen during this module, it's precisely the definition of the character, the character motivation, the character behavior, the character personality, the character history and background. The truth is that exists evidence of uh, the relationships between gender and game, but as always, when evidence is based on uh, scientific research, that scientific research can be sometimes contradictory or can be uh, sometimes scientific research is talking about particular context, particular situations, and the data is not perfectly transferable to um, our uh, social context. Brenda Laurel was one of the pioneers of the game industry, uh, making uh, surveys. Laurel found that uh, girls between 8 and 11 years old tend to enjoy games that allow uh, open-ending play and exploration, puzzles, mysteries. So obviously we see here the pattern. In, in contrast to male players, girls seem to like more uh, this kind of activities. Again, we are talking about scientific research conducted uh, in the 90s and uh, two particular groups of people with a particular social and uh, background uh, American uh, young girls. Okay, so we have to be careful when using this data, but it's interesting to know that it exists always the possibility of contrasting uh, real data with uh, all the kinds of research that uh, sometimes tends to be uh, more ideologically positioned. Other examples of research data are addressed to the study of the attitudes within male players, which uh, in many societies tend to be the majority of the game players. In terms of character desirability and likability, it seems that male doesn't prefer male characters. They prefer to play with female characters. But let's understand this. This means that the male characters prefer to see and to play or to control female characters sometimes. And this can be a sign of the objectification of female body. As commented, the society is changing and the video games industry might be reflecting already some shifts in relation to representation and diversity. For example, in the UK, uh, modern surveys have indicated that we are uh, having better representation of collectives, uh, LGBTQ and uh, BAME, within our uh, game designers. This year we have, for example, a French studio producing uh, the first example of video game narrative uh, driving video game, portraying a transsexual uh, man um, as a main character. Studies on popular culture, especially on the British school, have an important relationship with Marxism. Therefore, race is a surrogate of the social class, especially in colonial or post-colonial societies. Think, for example, in South American countries. But the representation of uh, ethnic groups is only one of the ways of representing these uh, relationships. We can also see the use of stereotypes to represent power and international relationships. In relation to this, Isbister is uh, giving us some advice. We should design uh, characters that appeal to universal values. We should avoid culture and race representation, or at least a specificity on that. We can maybe borrow elements from different ethnic groups. We can also borrow from universal archetypes. 
I'm thinking in our characters as uh, nationless, okay, ethnicless, if you want. Another alternative to this, another strategy could be to construct within particular context. Thinking of the target or the audience or product is addressed to. I'm thinking in what this audience is expecting from our product. And obviously, uh, the way they relate to other cultures or other ethnic groups. This doesn't warranty we are not going to misrepresent or underrepresent other groups. It only makes easier the acceptance of our product and probably the commercial success of our products. The third axis of representation regarding these authors is uh, about uh, the queerness or the play and the subversion. Queer refers to undefinition. Originally it was um, a pejorative word. With the time it has been transformed into a, a subcultural um, term that uh, is used uh, to defend and to identify this particular group of people, usually uh, linked to LGBT collective, and uh, in relation to their sexual identities and the sexual behavior. We have to understand that sexual identities and behaviors are uh, not the, the same term, the same way that gender and sexuality are not the same term. Today it's still uh, very uh, uncommon to find characters that are um, transsexual or are queer or even that uh, are, for example, homosexual. Although we have some examples from uh, current video games, like for example The Last of Us. Uh, this other game uh, is a character from uh, Guilty Gear, XX, Bridget, is um, supposed to be a man and is dressed as a woman, so it would be probably cross-dressed. Here we open the question of why representing these uh, uh, particular characters or why representing sexuality at all. I think it's very interesting the declarations of the of the creators of this video game, The Witcher, when they were talking about why this video game was so rich in sexual content. And they were explaining that they wanted to address this uh, game to a um, mature audience, but also because they thought that this sexual content was also conveying a lot of narrative values about the complexity of the motivations of the characters. So with this, we have arrived to the end of the lesson. Today we have tried to establish a dialogue uh, in terms of narrative and design about why we are representing characters uh, in different ways and how we have to deal sometimes with uh, complicated dilemmas in relation to gender, sex, culture and race. As always, I recommend some activities you have time to explore uh, the topic in major depth. The discussion this week is going to be based on the different examples you can provide of good practice and bad practice in relation to sex, gender and ethnic representation. Some of the references I employ here including some articles with uh, data in relation to gender representation. And that's all for today. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you in the lab. Take care.